Oh boy, here we go again. FUD is starting to circulate that the next exchange to collapse could be Binance, and if that happens, it could send Bitcoin and the whole crypto market plummeting, with Bitcoin at least going down to about $14,500, and if it breaks below that, then it could go down below $10,000. But just because it's FUD doesn't mean that it's not true, so stick around until the end of the video so that you can make sure that your investments are safe. And don't forget to hit that like button and let's go ahead and get right into it. John Reed Stark recently posted this tweet saying, Binance's proof of reserves report does not address effectiveness of internal financial controls. It doesn't express an opinion or assurance conclusion and doesn't vouch for the numbers. I worked at the SEC enforcement for 18 plus years and this is how I define a red flag. As you may know, CoinMarketCap.com recently started putting total assets for exchanges onto their platform, and this is supposed to show proof of reserves, but it doesn't show anything to do with liabilities. So this really doesn't mean anything, and this doesn't show us that they're backed up, because if they have $57.5 billion worth of total assets, but their total liabilities is double that, then there's not enough cryptocurrency on their platform to actually back up what the customers are supposed to have. This article by Cointelegraph says that Binance's proof of reserves raises red flags. It says Binance's efforts to improve transparency of its reserves also exposed red flags in the cryptocurrency exchange's finances. As noted by former Financial Accounting Standards Board or FASB member and investment manager, the report released by the audit firm Mazars did not bring investors confidence about the exchange's finances as it lacks information related to the quality of internal controls and how Binance's systems liquidate assets to cover margin loans. Another red flag raised by the Wall Street Journal's sources regards the lack of information about Binance's corporate structure. According to the report, Binance's chief strategy officer, Patrick Hillman, was unable to name Binance's parent company as Binance has been going through a corporate reorganization for almost two years. Differences between the total Bitcoin liabilities were also highlighted. The exchange's proof of reserve shows that Binance was 97% collateralized, excluding assets lended to users through loans and or margin accounts, indicating that the one-to-one -one ratio of reserves to customer assets was not achieved. And that's just for Bitcoin. They haven't released a full audit, and for what we've seen so far from their small audit of their Bitcoin holdings, they don't even have enough Bitcoin to back up all of the customers' supposed Bitcoin on their exchange. So basically, they're about 3% short on the supposed Bitcoin that customers are supposed to have on the exchange, and that's not to mention all of the other cryptocurrencies that they're probably short on as well, allegedly. And the people in charge of the company don't even know anything about the corporate structure and can't even tell who the parent company is for Binance. Additionally, from what I can tell, BNB or Binance's uh, native token is only used really for discounts on the exchange. So if people lose faith in Binance and they start to sell BNB, then that could cause a further decrease in confidence of the customers, causing people to withdraw their funds from Binance and sell BNB and basically making it fall into a death spiral. BNB is just a coin that's printed just like a fiat currency and used to prop up the value of Binance, just like FTT was for FTX. And if it comes out that Binance really isn't collateralized for most of the cryptocurrencies other than Bitcoin that they're supposed to have on their books, then we could be seeing a huge loss of confidence and a real plummet in the value of Binance and BNB, crashing the whole market and sending us down for a significant lower low, making a lot of people flee from the market and causing real capitulation that would probably see investors stay away from the crypto market for a number of years. With Binance being the number one cryptocurrency exchange, this would be a major hit to the confidence in the whole cryptocurrency industry, and I think we would be seeing increased regulatory scrutiny that would really just hamper the adoption of cryptocurrency, because if they really cared about protecting customers, then SBF and Do Kwon would probably already be in prison. And with increased regulation and litigation, we could be seeing the pressure mount up on these cryptocurrency exchanges, which also could lead some of them to collapse if they don't comply with all these regulations and laws. As this article by Coindesk says, U.S. prosecutors are looking to charge Binance and executives on possible money laundering violations. The Department of Justice has also discussed a possible plea deal with Binance's lawyers, the report added. So even if it does turn out that Binance is totally collateralized and they're not messing with anybody's money, if they do get these prosecutors on their back, then they could end up having some difficulties and they could lose confidence from their customers anyway. No matter how it happens, if the customers do lose confidence in Binance and they start to sell BNB token, then it could definitely send the whole project into a death spiral 
and that would almost certainly send the rest of the crypto market into a death spiral as well. John also commented on this, saying, per Reuters, during 2022, Binance kept weak anti-money laundering controls, processed over $10 billion in payments for criminals and companies seeking to evade U.S. sanctions, and plotted to evade regulators in the United States and elsewhere. Not surprising. I definitely can't confirm any of this. I'm just reporting on these articles that I'm seeing. But as you already know, there is some pretty sketchy things going on with Binance and their supposed headquarters. As this article by Decrypt says, where is Bitcoin giant Binance headquartered? When the CEO of the world's largest crypto exchange was asked where his company is headquartered, Shengping Zhao, or CZ for short, answered that Binance has no headquarters. Binance is the largest cryptocurrency exchange in the world, but where in the world is it? The question got a little bit louder after crypto media reported in November 2019 that Binance's Shanghai offices were raided by authorities. Binance denied the raid and denied that Shanghai offices existed at all. Almost two years later, Binance CEO Shengping Zhao, or CZ, still won't answer the question straight. He says Binance has no headquarters. If you were doing sketchy things that were supposedly illegal and you didn't want to have a centralized office where people could gather evidence or turn people against you, then this is some kind of strategy that you might use. Binance started in China, then relocated to Japan in 2017 when Chinese regulators looked unfriendly. In 2018, it moved its home base to Malta, which is a tax and regulatory safe haven, the land of lax financial regulations, as it says until Maltese authorities declared in 2019 that Binance is not licensed to do business there. The company was registered in both the Cayman Islands, another huge tax and regulatory safe haven, and the Sicil- and the Sil- The Seychelles. You like this! As of 2017, and has used the Cayman Islands address to register trademarks of its name and logo, so you'd think one of those is its headquarters. CZ lives in Singapore, and that's no secret. So is Singapore the headquarters? He won't say. It seems pretty hard to nail down where the actual decisions are being taken place, and everywhere it seems that they have an office is generally a tax haven or some kind of regulatory safe haven. So again, if they are trying to escape regulations or do anything illegal or definitely possibly fraudulent, allegedly, then this is one of the definite strategies that would be most obvious to take. Also, Binance is pretty well known for pausing withdrawals over and over again throughout history on their exchange. And no one really knows why they do that, so if they continue to pause withdrawals, it might cause more panic, and then eventually I think they're going to collapse as people start to lose confidence. But like I said, I really can't prove any of this, I'm just a guy that's reporting on the news. But I do have a pretty strong opinion on this one. This article by Cointelegraph says, Binance suspended a trader's account after complaints on Twitter. Binance CEO Shampin Zhao says that the firm doesn't want to service unreasonable clients. So basically, CZ is shutting down people's accounts for personal beliefs, and that is definitely censorship and something that I cannot stand for. The cryptocurrency space is supposed to be about decentralization and a trustless permissionless network, so I think that it's really important that they don't continue to kick traders off of their accounts for basically saying something that they don't agree with on Twitter. Even though Binance is apparently not based with their headquarters in the U.S., I think that we still should pull for free speech here. I mean, I think that cryptocurrency represents an opportunity to, for people to take back their freedoms. But if we do give the power all to these centralized exchanges and these people that don't care about free speech, then we're going to end up with a similar situation to what we've been dealing with for the past couple hundred years with the fiat monetary system. So for all of these reasons, I'm not using Binance. I never really have, but I don't keep my money on centralized exchanges anyway, because cold storage is the way to go. And Full self-custody is definitely the safest way, especially in the bear market, to keep your investments safe from big people in power like people that run exchanges, misappropriating your funds, and, and just taking advantage of you using greed to devastate your funds and get rich. Then they just disappear and sit on some beach somewhere not even paying taxes while you struggle and just wish that somebody would arrest them like Sam Bankman fried and Do Kwan who haven't been arrested because they obviously paid off the government. Anyway, my rant is over, and as you can tell, I just don't trust anybody. Speaking of not trusting people, Crypto.com CEO has a history of red flags, including bankruptcy and quick exits. So this is another reason why I would say just not to move your funds off of Binance and onto a different exchange, because you never know which exchange is going to collapse and which ones are actually having shady business practices. It says, before founding Crypto.com, Chris Marzelik, this guy right here, 
was involved in multiple ventures that ended in collapse, including one where suppliers claimed that they were unable to access their earnings. This is pretty much a similar situation to all of the people that run all of these cryptocurrency exchanges. For some reason, a lot of their history or the people who they hire to do the jobs history has to do with making scams and causing people to not be able to pull out their earnings, like Sam Bateman Freed hiring that poker fixer guy. Over a decade ago, Marzellic and his business partner were paid millions of dollars by their manufacturing company months before it entered bankruptcy. In a tweet thread published ahead of this story, Marzellic wrote, Startups are hard and you will fail over and over again. This is true, startups are hard, but usually people look to your track record to see if you're reliable, and if you have a history of being totally unreliable, then people might not trust your new startup. If people continue to look at these guys and see that their startups have failed over and over throughout the history of their career, then they might come to the conclusion that they're unreliable and then this startup might fail as well. I'm not saying that any of these projects are going to fail, but what I'm saying is that I don't trust anybody and I definitely don't trust any centralized exchange to keep my cryptocurrency safe. The whole idea of cryptocurrency is to take self-custody and so that's what I do with a cold storage wallet and I get mine from Ledger. If Binance doesn't collapse the market and neither does Crypto.com, then we also have some other huge catalysts this week that could send us down for another leg lower. On Tuesday, which is tomorrow at the time of recording, we have CPI and Core CPI, which is the most important thing, and this could definitely be a huge catalyst. But the very next day, we also have the FOMC meeting and the Fed interest rate hike decision. So if we continue to see CPI coming in higher, as you can probably already guess, this is going to send the market lower because that means that the Fed is going to have to continue being more hawkish and they might continue aggressively raising interest rates. Then, like I said on Wednesday, we do have that interest rate hike decision. And right now, it looks like the probability is that we have 72% chance that we're going to see a 50 basis point hike and a 27.7% chance that we're going to see a 75 basis point hike. If we see that 75 basis point hike, then you can definitely expect another leg down. And if we get this 50 basis point hike, then I think that's probably already priced into the market. And then we're going to be looking forward to what the Fed has to say 30 minutes after the interest rate hike decision. If the Fed comes out in their press conference and Jerome Powell says that they're going to continue raising rates and they might actually have to raise the target interest rate hike, or if he says anything about inflation not coming down, then we definitely could see another leg lower. And unless he comes out and says that they're basically going to pause interest rate hikes or start cutting interest rates, then I think everything else is pretty much priced into the market and we might end up just continuing to go sideways for a while. There might be some short-term relief with a little bit of a price increase, but I think that until we start to see evidence that we are seeing a soft landing and there's not going to be a dip in earnings for the stock market, then I think there's going to continue being uncertainty. And if the stock market does see decreasing earnings, then we could see a little bit of pressure on the downside for cryptocurrency. But like I've said in the past, I think eventually people are going to start looking for somewhere that they can put their investments that's not going to be getting damaged by earnings. And cryptocurrency doesn't have earnings. So hopefully crypto will start getting money put into it as the rest of the economy continues to suffer and people look for alternative investment opportunities. Let me know in the comments, do you think that this is all just FUD and nothing to worry about with Binance? Or do you think that they're actually misappropriating people's funds just like FTX and all of these other cryptocurrency exchanges have been doing and that they're going to be the next one to collapse? and send Bitcoin and the whole cryptocurrency plummeting for another leg lower. Either way, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day. And don't forget to hit that like button. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.